promise. Yeah. How many of y'all asses got bootleg copies? <laughs> Ruben Studdard on the front, you don't know what's the damn good man. Get authentic copies, like my man David said. We gotta support authentic copies of our products. David was wonderful. Give it up for David again. You saw something in there when David was arguing with Life Jennings? Y'all see that? Life was going off. Life almost pulled out his guitar and hit David, didn't it? What's up with that dude, man? But family, it's so good to be here, family, to talk about empowerment. Everybody say empowerment. 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 That's what we have to be, and that's what we have to live and breathe all the time, family. Because the thing is, it's one thing to be conscious, but you have to be conscious with a purpose. All right? And consciousness is not all about wearing costumes. Consciousness, anybody in all walks of black life can be conscious. That's what we wanted to do with the Hidden Color series. See, understand, I wasn't always a conscious dude at all. You know, I started writing relationship books. Some of y'all might have had my earlier books like The Art of Macking. How many of y'all got The Art of Macking? There wasn't nothing conscious about that at all. But I learned the conscious game years ago when I was in the street life. I used to be a little non-conscious criminal type of dude. You know, I'm transparent. <coughs> and being a hustler out there in Los Angeles, I would hang with other hustlers in the late 80s, early 90s. And back at that time, to be a hustler, you kind of had to be smart. So a lot of the street dudes would have books and they would study because they would like to learn the law so they can get out of jail. So I had a dude, a hustler, give me this one book that changed my life. This brother, I was at his spot, his trap house. And he's like, yo, play it. You need to read this book right here. This is going to change your life. <coughs> and I got the book, and the book was The Isis Papers by Dr. Francis Cook. Woo! Uh, so I got the book, I took it home, I wiped the cocaine off the cover of it. <laughs> don't know what they were doing with it, but they were doing something. I read that book, and that book literally changed my life. That was the one book that turned me around. So when I started to do the Hidden Color series, the first person I called was Dr. Welsing, all right? And she became a part of it and the documentary series became a historical imprint in pop culture. See, the thing is, with all the stuff that's going on with us right now, family, a lot of us, we want a quick fix and we gotta get off that quick fix mentality. Because a lot of people hit me up and they say, well, Tariq, I gotta hit you up on Twitter and ask you, what's some solutions to dealing with these white supremacists and these cops? Just tell me one solution. And it doesn't work like that, family, because the white supremacists, they've been practicing their craft for 500 years nonstop, every day. And we want a 140 character solution to something that's been happening for 500 years. So we have to be about empowerment. Say empowerment. Empowerment. We have to be about empowerment every day to challenge systematic white supremacy. What a lot of us want is a quick fix so we can go back to playing. You see, y'all saw all of our brothers getting executed in the last couple of weeks. Right after that, I noticed black folks were online talking about the Pokemon game. Do you know that we black folks are the damn Pokemons? We're the Pokemons that they're hunting in real life. So we gotta get serious about this, family, because the white supremacists are in survival mode right now. Just like Dr. Francis Cress Wilson told us that they are all about genetic survival. So when they find out that their numbers are dwindling, the white supremacists, they've been told that they're going to be a minority here in America in 50 years. So when they are going to be a minority, they're going to have to learn how to rule in an apartheid state. Look over in South Africa. I was in South Africa a few months ago and you have 80% black, very small minority of white people ruling everybody over there. So they have to create a police state in order to do that and that's what they're doing now. So family, this is why we have to have ways of 
doing things and reacting to the white supremacists. One thing we're gonna to have to stop doing, we're gonna to have to stop waiting on the white supremacists to make confessions to being racist. We keep presenting all of this evidence and all of this proof of systematic racism and white supremacy and the name of the game with them is denial at all costs. They will deny any evidence you have because their logic is based on the I'm white and I say so now. All right, so we have to understand that. We have to look to each other to come up with solutions and also we have to stop doing the crying game with the white supremacists. We have a habit of going to the white supremacists, crying to them, showing them how wounded we are. They know you're wounded, that's why they hurt us like that. So we're gonna to have to stop that crying game. Also, when we do these protests, the white supremacists, they engage in what I call black pain porn. They, like, they love to go out to Ferguson, they love to go out to Baltimore and film us and take pictures of us crying and being sad and disenfranchised because they sell that footage, they make thousands of dollars with the footage. Also, another thing with us black folks, we gotta stop putting on a show because when we see white folks with cameras, we start performing. Let's be real, we start being real extra with the crying. Oh, CNN, ah! We go real extra with the crying. And in some of these places, we literally start performing. I went over to Baltimore when the Freddie Gray riots were going on and black folks was out there dancing, twerking. That CVS store that they burned up, there was still smoke coming from the CVS. There was a bunch of dudes up there freestyling. I'm hot fire, I like the fire in the back. I'm like, <laughs> so we gotta stop performing for the white supremacist family and we gotta start getting a code of conduct where we are all about empowerment. empowerment. I said empowerment. Empowerment. Did y'all see me on CNN last week? Yeah. If you had, didn't see me live on CNN, I want you guys to look it up online and study the appearance I made on CNN last week because that shows you how to control the narrative when you're dealing with the white supremacists because they have a, a habit of controlling our narrative. So when something happens to us, they will flip it into something else. Mm. They'll start talking about gay and lesbian issues. They'll start talking about police reform and they won't tackle the issue of white supremacy. So I was on CNN, they called me up to talk about the, the shooting of this brother down in Florida, Charles Kinsley. Okay, most of y'all know about the case. If you don't know what happened was there was a black man, he was taking care of an autistic guy, he worked as a social worker. The autistic guy went in the street, the brother went out there, the police came, the black man literally laid on the ground, had his hands in the air, he was screaming out, I'm a social worker, this guy's autistic, he doesn't have a weapon, he has a toy, and then the police shot this black man three times. Now when this brother Charles was doing interviews, he was so shook, he still had his hands up in interviews. He was like, hey, I don't know what happened. Uh, I was just there. I asked him why you shot me. He said, I don't know. So this brother still got his hands up in the air. He's so sure. So CNN called me up. CNN called me and they said, well, Tariq, you want to come down and talk about the Charles Kinsley shooting? And I thought, I said, y'all really want me to come down there and talk about the Charles Kinsley shooting on live TV? Because I've done CNN before, I've done Dr. Drew's show before, that's the show I was on. So I went down there to CNN, and you know, I haven't seen the people in a while, and they were very nice to me, and that's the way they kind of butter you up so you don't go real bad on the air. So they see me, oh, Tariq, good to see you, man, you look so great. Said, hey, long time no see, and I'm being fake with them. Oh, good to see you, too. <laughs> So they're just putting it on, hugging and kissing me, loving me, talking to me very nice, and I'm being very nice to them, and I'm thinking in my mind, well, when we get on air, I'm gonna slice you. <laughs> so they get me on air, and they got two white people. They got a white lady who used to work for Homeland Security. They got the big dogs on me now. Then they got another retired white cop. He is one of those Blue Lives Matter activists. So, they got me going against the heavyweights. So we start the show, they talk to them first. Immediately, these two suspected white supremacists, they start talking about how it was an accident that Charles was shot 
three times. <laughs> they were saying, well, Dr. Drew, you know, a lot of times this goes back to training. He accidentally shot Charles, and unfortunately, he's gonna have to get more training, we're gonna get more resources for law enforcement so we can train our officers better so that accidents won't happen like this again. They kept using the word accident over and over. So they said, Tariq, what do you think? I said, well, sir, ma'am, how do you shoot a person three times by accident? and then handcuff them after you shoot them accidentally. <laughs> they changed the subject. They start talking about, well, you know, accidents happen. Accidents happen and that's all about police reform. And then I interjected and I said, well, look, the FBI said that in 2006, white supremacist organizations have infiltrated law enforcement. So what we have it's black people being targeted by race soldiers pretending to be police. I said that live on air, they looked at me like, come on, come on, Tariq, come on. Race soldiers, Tariq. You're calling our boys in blue race soldiers? I stopped them. I'm, Sir, there's nothing wrong with police. I'm not talking about police. Police are not bad. I like police. The problem is you have race soldiers pretending to be police. There's nothing in the police manual that says execute people. Come, 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 come on! Drink, who's being executed? I said, Philando Castile, Alton Sterling, the brother of Brazil down there in Houston. They started stuttering again. Then the white cop asked me, he was like, well, Tariq, all this race soldier talk. Do you even know the race of this cop down there in Florida? I said, yes, sir, he's a white Latino. And he said, that just shows how ignorant you are, Tariq. He's Hispanic. <laughs> I said, sir, and that's the key, remain cool. I, all that name calling, I stayed cool. I said, sir, Hispanic is not a race. And the man and the woman started attacking. Oh, how dare you say Hispanic is not a race? Hispanic is their own race. That's so insulting to Hispanics. Hispanic is a race. Dr. Drew butted in and said, Tariq is right. Hispanic is not a race. <laughs> he said, technically, he's right. That man and woman had the word nigger on the tip of their tongue. <laughs> they were turning blood red. They wanted to call me a nigga so bad because they didn't have an answer to what I was saying. I wouldn't let them frame it into a police narrative. So after the interview, I go back in the hallway of CNN. <laughs> and they got monitors all over CNN so everybody there could see what's happening. What no more smiles for me in CNN? <laughs> All oh, the energy was gone. No more smiles, no more hugs, and I'm walking through and I can just cut the tension with a knife and I'm being petty. I'm like, anybody ballet in here? They were looking at me like, get your black ass out of this studio. But family, that, that's why we have to frame the narrative ourselves. We have to say what it is and not let them take us down a road of BS because that's what the white supremacists like to do. They like to deflect and detour and we gotta stop going for that, family. Just like when the, the brother out there in um, Dallas, Michael Johnson, the guy who went Rambo on the police down there. They keep trying to tie him into Black Lives Matter and I'm not saying right or wrong, good or bad, but he was the spook who sat by the door. Y'all know about that book in that movie? Sam Greenland. Back in the 70s, there was a brother from um, Chicago, Sam Greenland. This brother wrote a book and they turned it into a movie called The Spook That Sat By The Door. The book was about a black CIA agent who went into the CIA, learned all the game, and then took that information back to the ghetto and trained gang members. Talking about the brother Freeman. What happened was, in the right. 70s, they would give a lot of money to independent black producers to make these black exploitation films because these films were primarily directed towards the black audience. So white people didn't really care too much about it. Most of those movies had a get whitey thing. You know, most of those movies were like, you job, for me, I gotta go get that white stuff. It was that type of stuff. So it was real cartoonish. So they would fund these movies, these movies would make a little profit, but then they funded The Spook Through Sat By The Door. This movie 
was telling black folks how to build bombs. This movie was telling black people how to snipe people, how to do logistics, how to train in the, in the woods. It was telling people how to use street lights as coordinates to shoot people and commit guerrilla warfare and create a revolution. So they put the movie out, and then by the time the white supremacists figured out what the movie's about, it wasn't no get sucker, get whitey movie, they started to pull the movie out of theaters. It was only a theater for And they weeks. banned that movie. They went and took and destroyed all the prints of the movie. Somebody stored one print, there's one print left of that movie. They stored it in a vault somewhere under a different name. A brother named Tim Reed, he's the dad of the sister, sister. sister show. Y'all remember that? Yeah, the brother. Tim Reed found that print put the film out on his production company, and that's why we know that movie exists today. So give it up for Tim Reed. Yeah! I just shut his uh, studio down too. Because the thing is, speaking of Michael Johnson, he had the white supremacists shook. Because the thing is, they try to play tough with us, but it was one guy bucking all of those white folks. And I'm not saying good or bad, right or wrong, but they wouldn't even go in there themselves and get him. They had to send a robot in there and get that brother. See, this is why y'all gotta stop being afraid of technology. If you are a black person, a person of color, you have a code, technology won't harm you. Look at Vietnam. They went over to Vietnam with all types of weapons, tanks, helicopters, and they still lost to the Vietnamese. They had to leave that over there because the Vietnamese said, we're gonna ride or die. We're not gonna be subject to you. Look at the Haitian Revolution. You had a little island of unarmed African people going up against Napoleon, the mightiest army in the world at the time. The Africans said, we're gonna get rid of our white god, tap into our African spiritual system called Houdoum, and they defeated the mightiest army of all time. That's never been done before. They know that's where we are. They know that we can do that again. That's why they have to lie to us about our history. That's why we have the Hidden Colors series, family. Now, I know they gave me the bell, but let me say this in closing. We are the original people of the planet. When we did Hidden Colors 1, we showed you all the original people of the planet look like the people in this room. Our creator did not make us the first people on the planet, the mother and fathers of civilization, the mothers and fathers of speech, thought, language. He didn't make us first on this planet so we can turn around and bow down to the white supremacist family. Do you understand that? Thank you very much, Ohio.